development, amending the duties of the inclusionary housing board, amending certain affordability requirements, clarifying a certain city policy regarding mixed income communities, repealing offsite substitutions, repealing the inclusionary housing offset fund, repealing density bonuses, requiring residential projects to submit inclusionary housing plans, amending requirements for continued affordability, clarifying the applicability of certain fair housing laws and regulations, establishing certain penalties, and generally relating to inclusionary housing. Sponsors are Councilmember Ramos, President Mosby, Dorsey, Councilmember Glover, Conway, Bullock, and Torrance. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, this is a, a really important bill. Uh, as everyone knows, we released the House Baltimore package um, number one, and we talked about coming back with a second phase. Well, here we are with the second phase. Obviously, the first phase uh, was the Dollar House program, the repair hope program for communities that have been faced with disproportionate amount of disinvestment from the city, from the state, and from the federal government in the past, as well as the third bill uh, to ensure uh, that we are providing our seniors with the much protection around reverse mortgage mortgages uh, to try to keep them in their homes. That was the first package. So this here comes the second package. This is the first bill of the second package. Very happy to partner with uh, Councilwoman Ramos. Uh, this has been a a um, a pillar uh, in her work on housing issues throughout the years. It naturally fit uh, with her and her advocacy for all that she's done around housing. I'm really excited to bring Baltimore City in the 21st century as it relates to real inclusionary housing, uh, as particularly as it relates to us building out new communities and seeing a tremendous amount of development in certain areas of a city, uh, ensuring that we don't go back to the failed policies of the past of concentrated, concentrating poverty, uh, not developing mixed use, uh, uh, mixed income uh, areas. So with that said, I'm going to turn it over to the sponsor uh, and the, the quarterback for the council on this important piece of legislation. Uh, and that is Councilwoman Ramos. Councilwoman Ramos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, colleagues. Um, I don't have to remind you that uh, the first inclusionary housing law that was passed um, in Baltimore City in 2007 um, has only produced 37 affordable units. And that's because the law itself allows for many loopholes, many waivers. And so this version that you see before you swings the total opposite direction um, and removes those loopholes so that we are ensuring that um, all of these units that uh, we need in areas that typically don't have affordable units do get that because it is an important value that we all share, that we have mixed income communities, that we have more affordable housing, and this bill gets us closer. Um, so I'm uh, really excited to work with all of you um, on this bill. Um, I thank the council president for giving me this opportunity. Um, uh, thank uh, Councilman Dorsey for putting the, the bill in last year or two years ago, three years ago now to um, uh, make a study. So the enterprise community partners had a study that we have used to um, make amendments to um, the inclusionary bill or the, the, the current law and um, put this bill together. And of course, uh, thanks to um, Baltimore City uh, DHCD for also helping with this bill. So uh, this is a, a paradigm shift um, in affordable housing and making sure that we have mixed income communities. And I'm really excited uh, to be working on it. Thank you, Mr. President. No, thank you, uh, Madam Councilwoman. And again, you know, this is the type of substantive legislation that we all double down on when we decided to take the oath and come into the 73rd term of the Baltimore City Council. We want to really identify issues that were systemic issues that have been overlooked uh, in the past. And I think that this is one, uh, particularly as we look at the lack of inclusionary housing that we've seen through all the development uh, over the you know past two decades here in the city of Baltimore. With that said, again, thank you for your leadership. Councilman Ramos, this bill is being assigned to the committee as a whole. Mr. President, could you uh, add my name to the bill, please? So sorry, uh, uh, Madam Clerk uh, and to the executive secretary, if you could note that Madam Vice President would like to be added to the bill. I see the hand of Chairman Stokes, as well as the hand of Councilman Zeke Cohen. Are there any additional additions at this time? Thank you for that. Um, now, Madam Clerk, if we could go into 22-196. City Council Bill 22-0196, Short-Term Rental Assistance Program, for the purpose of establishing the Short-Term Rental Assistance Program, delivering short-term rental assistance to families experiencing housing emergencies, 
creating a maximum amount of rental assistance paid to any one family per month, creating a maximum duration that any one family may receive rental assistance under the program, establishing eligibility requirements for the program, requiring the Department of Housing and Community Development to adopt rules and regulations to administer the program, establishing admission standards for the program, providing for an appeals process in case of an application denial, defining certain terms, and providing for a special effective date. Sponsors are Councilmember Ramos, President Mosby, Councilmember Glover, Chair Conway, and Councilmember Bullock. Thank you, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, this bill is the second bill of that House Baltimore uh, second phase package. Uh, it's again uh, championed by um, Councilwoman Ramos, uh, but in a little different posture. This is a bill that Councilman, uh, Councilwoman Ramos you know, saw a huge need for. Uh, it's one thing to look at things from an anecdotal approach. It's another thing to look at the real data. We know that the folks that are help, helping us with harm reduction, particularly in our programs like ROCA or Safe Streets, uh, we know that one of the main barriers for them continued success is through housing uh, insecurity issue. This goes directly at that. I was really excited when Councilwoman Ramos came to me with this idea. Very excited to be a sponsor and supportive of it. At this point, I'd like to, turn, I would like to yield the floor over to Councilwoman Ramos for the introduction. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, colleagues. Um, as the president said, uh, this is an important uh, piece of legislation to really help people out who are um, who just need to take that next step um, and need that housing assistance. We have heard from uh, both Roca and Safe Streets that they're participants. One of the the obstacles to success is stable housing, uh, and so we want to provide these rental assistance, um, this rental assistance for a year. Um, to to them, as well as to people who are looking for jobs and for and creating, excuse me, participating in job training, uh, because sometimes that first check doesn't come quite yet when you want to be able to pay the rent, and so uh, we're we're working to get that. Um, this uh, addresses that as well. Also, for people experiencing homelessness in conjunction with rapid rehousing dollars, um, and uh, any time that somebody needs to um, vacate their property because of the of um, you know, not complying with the rental assistance law. So this is vast um, and I'm really excited to work with all of you on this uh, as well as um, with um, DHCD. They are also thinking along the same lines. So I think this is very exciting uh, that we're able to do this. And I have to say that one of the reasons that uh, in 2016, in my previous role that uh, we um, uh, put the affordable housing trust fund together. There were many reasons, but uh, a program like this was one of them that was a motivator for me. Um, so I know we'll be looking at you know funding sources and talking a lot more about this, uh, but it is needed. And this adds to the work that this council has done to help people um, stay in their homes and with stable housing. So I'm uh, honored to uh, be a part of this and um, to be working on this issue. And I um, appreciate the opportunity, Mr. President. Thank you. No, again, thank you for your leadership. Housing has been a core competency of our administration since the beginning. You know, first package that we announced was about housing uh, and housing security has been an, at the forefront of it. So again, thank you for your leadership and bringing this uh, to our attention. I think I see the hand of Madam Vice President. You would like to be added onto the bill, Madam Vice President? Yes, Mr. President. Okay, at this time, um, Madam Clerk and to the Executive Secretary, I have Madam Vice President would like to be added. Uh, Councilman Zeke Cohen would like to be added. Are there any additional additions? Uh, Councilman uh, Chris Burnett would like to be added as well. Uh, thank you for those additions. Again, uh, thank you for your leadership, uh, Councilwoman Ramos. Uh, this bill has been assigned to the community as a whole. Now we're gonna turn to resolutions to be introduced for first reading. Madam Clerk, if you could please read the first resolution. City Council Resolution 22-0088R, Informational Hearing, CSX Coal Silo Explosion, for the purpose of inviting representatives from the CSX, CSX Transportation Incorporated under the general law of the laws of the Commonwealth of Virginia, the Baltimore Fire Department, and the Office of Emergency Management to investigate the cause of the CSX coal silo explosion that occurred on December 30th, 2021 in Curtis Bay to address what is being done about air quality in the area and how an incident of this type may be prevent prevented in the future. Sponsors are Councilmember Porter and Bullock. At this point, the gentlewoman from the 10th district, the floor is yours if you'd like to speak on behalf of this resolution. 
Uh, thank you so much, Mr. President. I just will want to add that, um, you know, to the description, environmental justice is very serious and a very serious concern in Curtis Bay. And so I'm glad that uh, Councilman Bullock is co-sponsoring this with me. I think that the residents of Curtis Bay have um, endured this for a very long time. Um, and so we just need to figure out um, the issue that that occurred um, early in December and how we can move past it and also how we can um, encourage air quality monitoring um, for future generations. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you, Madam Councilwoman. I see the hand of Councilman uh, Chairman Stokes. Chairman Stokes, the floor is yours. I, I, I really was just we are co-chair, but I just want to mention in 2015, because of what happened in Charles Village, because of the trains, uh, the street collapse, and then in 2017, it collapsed at another location. So I think this is a, um, a bill that, that the whole council needs to talk about, not just at Curtis Bay, probably all over the city. So we don't keep going back, revisiting what these trains are doing or damaging some of the neighborhoods and like the street, two streets collapsed in three years in the 12th district. So I just want to be a co-sponsor. Thank yes, sir. So, this. Madam uh, Clerk, as well as Executive uh, Secretary, can make sure that we add uh, Chairman Stokes. And I believe I saw in the chat um, Council Member Torrance is having some audio issues. He would like to be added as well. Are there any additional co sponsors? I see the hand raised of Councilman Z. Cohen, Councilwoman Odette Ramos, and Councilman Tony Glover, as well as Councilman Chris Burnett. Are there any additional co sponsors? Hearing and seeing none, this resolution has been assigned to public safety and government operations. Madam Clerk, if you could read in 22-89R. City Council Resolution 22-0089R, request for state action, full funding for Baltimore City Public Schools for the purpose of calling on Governor Lawrence J. Hogan to fully fund the Baltimore City Public Schools to the levels established by the Blueprint for Maryland's Future and as required by state law. Sponsors are President Mosby, Chair Costello, McCray, Councilmember Ramos, Bullock, Torrance, Porter, Vice President Middleton, Chair Stokes, and Councilmembers Burnett and Glover. I see the hand raised of Chairman uh, Schleifer. Would you like to be added to this, Chairman Schleifer? Yes, if you could add Chairman Schleifer to this resolution. Also see the hand of uh, Councilman Z. Cohen, uh, Chairman uh, Mark Conway. Uh, today at today's luncheon, we had a chance to be briefed uh, by uh, Frank Pantanella of the ACLU and how we heard some really positive information about uh, the Kerwin Commission and ultimately the blueprint for education in Maryland. Um, we also heard some troubling information, and that's um, that you know Governor Hogan decided uh, after you know the General Assembly passed the bill, after he vetoed the bill, after the General Assembly overrid the bill, uh, not to. Um, include $99 million of the funding uh, to help solve the gap of Kerwin here in the city of Baltimore in his fiscal 2023 uh, plan. Now, there is no secret that education has set at the core of some of our um, uh, issues here uh, in the city of Baltimore. Uh, through the Kerwin Commission, all the way back to Thornton, uh, to separate but equal, and to a point where folks were uh, unable to be educated here at all in the city of Baltimore based off of the color of their skin adequately. Uh, education has always at, been at the core of all of our issues, uh, be it the crime, the grime, uh, and the issues that we see plaguing certain communities here uh, to this day. Uh, this was an opportunity for us all to come together uh, and push for historic funding uh, for education. Again, knowing that not only through court rulings, um, but through also uh, white pages after white pages, uh, the lack of uh, funding that Baltimore City has received uh, for as long as any of us have been alive in the city uh, 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 is, is, is troubling. Um, we're at a moment where the state is dealing with a um, huge surplus, uh, and to cut this money out at this particular point uh, is extremely problematic. Uh, I know that we've constantly talked about these non-binding agreements or non-binding resolutions uh, that we could send to Annapolis or that we could send to D.C., you know, I felt very strongly about this particular one. Uh, this is to show our unification, not only as a council, but also with our state delegation as they continue to fight to ensure that they find and replace uh, or work with the governor to um, add this money back in this $99 million. Uh, this is going to go not only to the Baltimore City Public School System, not only to our children, but more importantly to their futures. Uh, and that's why we are pushing 
uh, for this resolution here today and calling for immediate adoption. Uh, with that, I would like to call on uh, Chairman Costello. Sorry, after two years, you figure I would know where the mute button is. Thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate your leadership and partnership here. Um, I want to add a, a couple quick points before uh, moving to suspend the rules. Uh, this funding, the $99 million, is part of the Education Effort Adjustment Index. This is something that was passed in Kerwin that is specifically intended to benefit jurisdictions that ha have higher levels of poverty than the rest of the state. There are only two jurisdictions out of 24 jurisdictions in the state of Maryland that are negatively impacted by this proposed budget um, from Governor Hogan for fiscal year 2023. I just want to make something very clear for, for our colleagues and for everyone listening at home, Mr. President. There have been record levels of education funding provided during Governor Larry Hogan's seven years in office. That is a fact. That is an undisputable fact. But I also want to provide the appropriate context for that. The Maryland Constitution is structured in the following way. The governor proposes a budget, and then the General Assembly deliberates it, makes changes to it, passes it, and then the governor may veto it, and the General Assembly may override it. This has been a, a recurring theme in Annapolis for years now, where Baltimore City is shortchanged for what we are due from the state. This isn't more money. We are not asking for more money. We are simply asking for what we are owed. For example, if you're Biweekly take home pay for your job is $1,000. And I were to say to you, would you be okay if we cut that by 10% and your take home pay is only $900? You're not asking for more money. You're just asking to be paid what you are actually owed for an honest day's work. And that is what we are talking about here. What has happened with this is absolutely unconscionable. And the reason that many folks don't hear about this is because we have amazing representatives at the state level and our city senate and our city house of delegates delegation to Annapolis who come in every single year and clean this up and correct it so that our students are getting something remotely close to their fair share. Again, we are not asking for more money. We are asking to be funded what is provided for in state law. So again, Mr. President, I want to thank you for your leadership and partnership and rallying our entire council behind this. At this time, uh, I would like to move the, to suspend the appropriate rules to ask for immediate adoption. Without objection, the rules will be suspended. Hearing and seeing none, the rules are suspended. Uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman Costello, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. I move for immediate adoption of the resolution. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. President Mosby. Aye. Councilmember Cohen. Yes. Councilmember McCray. Yes. Dorsey. If I could, I'd just like to make one comment. Floor's yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just, I appreciate everything that uh, my colleague, uh, Councilman Costello, pointed out. Um, every time I hear the phrase, which is often coming from the governor's camp uh, that he has funded education to a record level. I always want to remind people that the caveat, and I think that this is um, to my colleague's point, is that yes, in raw dollars, the amount has gone up, but not even enough to cover the cost increases incurred year over year. That one dollar more is still a record level, even if it gets you less than what you got the year before. That when you need two dollars more, one simply will not do. And that's the kind of funding that we've gotten year over year from the Hogan administration. Um, and so I'm very thankful to be here uh, with all of you supporting uh, proper funding um to to continue to 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 fund education at the level that's necessary so uh, i'm voting yes thank you madam clerk councilmember conway aye schleifer 
Yes. Middleton? Yes. Terrence? Yes. Burnett? Yes. Bullock? Aye. Porter? Aye. Costello? Mr. President, I'd like to explain my vote. Um, yes, sir, Mr. Uh, Chair. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm remiss for not mentioning um, my, my personal position on non-binding resolutions. This is the third resolution in seven and a half years that I've assisted in helping to write and, and been a part of as a lead sponsor. Um, so I think it's important to point that out. I do not take this lightly. And again, I wanna reiterate the fact that this is so critically important that we're talking about nearly 10% of the state contribution to our city school system. Um, action needs to be taken. Uh, and again, I wanna thank um, our Senate and House delegation in Annapolis um, for their efforts, as I know they are actively working on cleaning up this mess. Thank you, Mr. President, I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Stokes. Can I explain my vote? What was I, your agree with my I agree with my colleagues. It's just appalling as chair of education in Baltimore City that the governor find it to go back and forth with our, our legislature in Annapolis when we just were fighting to keep four schools open just off of maintenance by itself. And we were able to keep Dr. Bernard Harris open. And I found it appalling that he going back and forth with our legislators to thank crime and education do not mix well and they do not. So I'm just want to be on the record said I support this resolution, but I just find it appalling. So I vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair, Madam Clerk. Councilmember Glover. Yes. Councilmember Ramos. Yes. There it is. The motion is approved. The resolution is now adopted. Uh, you can find the consent calendar in section A at the back of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? So it's, it's been moved as well as properly seconded. All those in favor of approving the consent calendar, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The motion carries and the calendar is now approved. Um, before we get into second reader, uh, I'm going to go back to our showcase. Uh, we have one love that's on with us today. Uh, members, February is National Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Here to join us this evening uh, to speak on the work that they've been doing to combat teen dating violence. We have Ms. Uh, Hall, as well as Mr. Keith Scroggins, along with the Youth Ambassador Team from One Love Foundation. Members on your desk, well, on your computers, uh, you will find three handouts from One Love Foundation uh, that um, you can reference and share with your constituents. At this point, I'd like to turn the floor over to Ms. Hall or Mr. Scroggins. Thank you, uh, Council President Mosby. Uh, hello also to uh, Vice President Sharon Green Middleton and Council members, as well as uh, Ms. Danielle, uh, Councilwoman Danielle McCray, who made it possible for us to be here today, and we appreciate her assistance. We are, we're not going to be very long coming to you today. Um, presenting is our executive director for the Mid-Atlantic Region, uh, Ms. Ojeda Hall. And we have two of our students from City College uh, who are members of the One Love Club at City College, Ms. Ramona Pike and Ms. Ivy Aquilino. And they will speak after Ms. Hall completes her presentation. Thank you very much. Good evening, Council President, Vice President Sharon Green Middleton. Council members, council staff. My name is Ojeda Hall and I serve as the executive director in the Maryland, DC, Virginia and Delaware region for the One Love Foundation. One Love is an organization that is dedicated to violence prevention, to the prevention of teen dating violence, specifically something that one in three teens in Maryland will experience this year. I am a Baltimore City nat native born at Sinai Hospital and I myself have experienced teen dating violence. This is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month, and I want to thank my colleague Keith, who works at One Love, and thank you in particular at, for the opportunity to speak about the One Love Foundation and about our mission of prevention. Thank you also for all that you're currently doing to prevent violence and to promote relationship education among our youth. 
Our hope tonight is that you will come to know us better and that together we can act on the key ways to improve violence prevention in Baltimore City. One Love began out of a problem, which is a relationship violence tragedy, the death of Baltimore native Yardley Love in 2010. What we know is that her death was 100% preventable if she or anyone around her had understood the warning signs of an unhealthy and increasingly dangerous relationship. So our family started One Love to do what mothers, they said what Mothers Against Drunk Driving did to, for that issue, teach about the issue, remove the stigma from the abused, and teach bystanders like young people and friends to take away the keys. So we created dynamic educational resources, lesson plans, workshops that youth-facing organizations, including schools, could use in their health curricula and in classrooms to ensure that young people have a common language for understanding relationship health and healthy relationships. We asked ourselves, what do young people need to help themselves and their friends? And Yardley's death was instructive there in that friends are the greatest untapped resource for violence prevention. If young people had a common language and knew how to talk about the issue, they could be the new front lines to help. And people joined us because we had a remarkable movie at the time called Escalation. And when I first saw the Escalation movie, I began to realize that I've misunderstood some of my friends and family members' relationships and called things normal that are not normal because abuse can actually sneak up on you. And as you know, teen dating violence is a public health epidemic in this country, even more so than COVID, than, than since the COVID pandemic began. While rarely discussed, we know that one in two binary uh, on a teenage level, one in three teenage girls, nearly one in 14 men will be in an abusive relationship in their lifetime. This problem is widespread. It's in every community. And until the One Love Foundation began primary prevention approaches targeting young men and women at earlier ages had not been pursued. And what we're doing is working. You can think about the National Domestic Violence Hotline as the resource, premier resource for victims. We want you to think of us as the central resource for prevention so that youth can all know the 10 signs of healthy relationships and the 10 signs of unhealthy relationships through the widespread use of our education center. Just so you know, One Love is philanthropically funded so that we can provide free educational content that is accessible 24 hours, seven days a week. Yardley's mom, who was a Baltimore City educator for persons with disabilities, wanted to ensure that all could access these programs at any time with our training. And to date, One Love has educated 156,000 people in Maryland and 1.7 million globally over the last six, six years with our tools and built active partnerships with over 140 schools and community-based organizations like the Maryland Center for School Safety, Free State Justice, the Baltimore Ravens, the, Baltimore, the Maryland Office of Crime Control and Prevention, the University of Maryland Department of Health, Behavioral Health Administration. We've grown into five regions around the country, but Maryland is the flagship and so is Baltimore. In Maryland, we're active in nine county school systems and Baltimore City. We've trained 12,000 midshipmen and 180 state troopers. We've conducted in-service training for Baltimore County, Baltimore City, uh, Prince George's County, Carroll County, Calvert County Police. In Baltimore City, we've conducted trainings for 29 schools, educating over 3,000 students. But we need more help. Maryland educators understand the importance of this education, which has only increased during COVID. And we need our elected officials to understand the importance of violence prevention funding and partnership as well. Our students are isolated, depressed, and increasingly using social media for friendships, hooking up, maybe dating, which I'll show you in our slides shortly. One educator said students need social emotional learning and mental health supports and that every subject needs to have a trauma informed lens. And thank you again for your work as a city on trauma informed practices. And let's go to the social media where the, these young people are, which is what One Love does. I'm gonna show you our slide presentation before our students speak, but our ask is that each city council member would meet with us individually to discuss how we can work in your district in partnership with you to deliver this education. And to the Honorable Nick Mosey, Mosby Council President, our ask is that you would provide us with any discretionary funding to do prevention education in our city schools. Thank you. I'm gonna pull up our slides now. While you're pulling up the slide, have you guys in the past, um, 
gone after uh, child and youth funds, children and youth funds? We have not. Well, that's a uh, potential opportunity. Okay. Could you apply for the mayor's ARPA money? Do you guys know if you apply for the American Rescue Plan money through the mayor's office? We did not re reply, apply for the CARES Act funding um, as of yet. I think we have an office. We do work in Baltimore City and all the counties. Our office is in Baltimore County, so it might be um, might not be the easiest for us, but would love to talk with you about how, how we can get that money to Baltimore City schools, particularly for health educators, particularly to do violence prevention education. Understood. Really quick one love. So our core purpose, it's simple. We want to end relationship abuse. It's happening all over Baltimore and create a world of healthier relationships. We accomplish this by education and prevention programs targeting young people ages 11 to 24. You may recognize this space. She was all over the news. This is Yardley Love. Our work is focused on making sure that others have the information that Yardley and her friends did not. Our core concept is that there are 10 signs we learned of an unhealthy relationship and we have resources on how to help yourself and a friend, how to talk to young people, how to end a uh, relationship, how to create a relationship safety planning guide. And then most of the time when we talk to young people about unhealthy signs, they wanted to know what healthy relationships look like. And so we have uh, healthy relationships workshops to identify the healthy signs and put the healthy signs into practice. Today, we have thousands of youth leaders, educators, and communities engaged in violence prevention. Our leadership program, which Ivy and Ramona will talk about in a minute, help young people to live the 10 signs in their daily life and to bring the relationship education to their own community. Uh, we have teen ambassadors and, and many opportunities for young people to lead. And I wanted to share a little bit about what young people are telling us because we did a listen and learn project. You may know this. Um, only 15% of young people are saying that they're actually in a committed romantic relationship. They report more frequently they're hooking up than being in a serious long-term relationship. And social media is the, is the essence of the timeline. So it's, it's essential to, to the dating timeline that students can meet online, date online, fight online, break up online. Um, or in their relationships online. This is a quote from a Latina woman, young, young woman who says a lot of times it's not in the in person, it's on the phone. A lot of girls still have that romanticized, I'm going to be, I'm going to be asked to hang out. It's I'm going to text you. Now I'm going to Snapchat you. Now we've been Snapchatting for many months. So now I guess we're dating. Teens struggle with knowing how to help a friend who's in an unhealthy relationship and being brave enough to, uh, to step in and say something. And um, guys in particular lack socially acceptable ways to express their emotion and can shut down. Here's a quote from an Asian male that says, when a guy is going through something hard, they shut people out of their lives. They go back into their own shell. Girls will kind of go to their friends and be outward, but guys, you see them shutting down, shut out their friends or stop talking to people. They'll overthink everything and in the wrong way. And in their mind, they'll convince themselves that it's a negative thing and amplify it. And they will, and they think everyone dislikes them or is talking about them, convincing themselves that a person might not like them. So loneliness begets loneliness. And teens reveal around boundary setting just an awkwardness and the ability to um, express boundaries or to call for boundaries, not wanting to hurt or offend the other person or come across as one teen said, Blame or many teens we spoke to remain silent when it comes to expressing their boundaries. Um, so, as we said earlier, on uh, on a total level, one in three women, one in three, nearly one in three men, one in two trans and non-binary people will experience relationship abuse in their lifetime. This is higher for Black women, higher for Indigenous women, and re and research shows that the health of our relationships are dictating our grades, our health outcomes, um, nearly every aspect of our lives. One Love's model is scalable. Uh, peers leave other peers in schools. We train trainers and we have technology that enables the delivery of our, our workshops. And early research is finding that this is working. Um, we have improved outcomes and attitudes about dating. 96% of folks who have taken our workshops agree they're able to, to recognize the signs 
of an abusive or unhealthy relationship in their life or in their friend's life. They are, they are beginning to engage in prevention oriented behaviors, bystander behaviors. They agree that 91% uh, agree that they're able to recognize the signs in the life of themselves or their friends, and they're changing their behaviors. 96% um, also say that other students should go through this workshop. So we're just getting high marks across the board. So our ask is for you to help us to build the future. I mentioned escalation as the first experiment that we tried with Hopkins help um, uh, in 2006, it came out, it, people were blown away by being able to see the cycle of violence in a film in a way that was unexpected and was, um, is, hard to see or hard to talk about in real in real life. And since then, we've created 17 more pieces of video content. Um, we have increasingly diversified our video. We created 11 new films. They are all diverse. They represent LGBTQ plus relationships, African-American relationships. We've used wide angle youth media in Baltimore. These are things we didn't have three years ago. We are ready to go in Baltimore City now. Um, and our education center, you can check us out at www.joinonelove.org slash education, and you'll be able to go into our full education center. We call it 1.0, but it has over 150 resources in the library. We're working now on education center 2.0. We've asked the federal government. We've asked for an appropriation um, that seems to be moving through the Senate um, at the national level through um, through. Uh, Senator Van Hollen uh, for to help us create Education Center 2.0, but 1.0 is amazing. And we're doing things increasingly digital because that's where the young people are. We're launching mobile friendly um, education. We're creating PSA. Some of you may have seen us on WBAL. There's a, a small one minute piece that comes on that says, because I love you. Uh, and it talks about manipulation, how the, how the phrase, because I love you can be manipulating um, and keep people in emotionally unhealthy relationships. But we've got other PSAs that are out as well. We are measuring success by the number of young people we've educated. As I said, in Maryland, it's been 156,000. Uh, our team is growing and taking action. The, these are just examples of the ways that we're measuring. We need to, but here's, here's the bottom line. We need to get into more classrooms. We need to develop partnerships. We need to expand our online education. We need to build an army, army of young people who can do this themselves with their peers because that's who they're listening to. We need to broaden awareness and ensure one love is for all. And uh, in May, we'll be honoring at, at, at MNT Bank Stadium, we'll have 1500 people. would love to have you all there, um, bringing our entire community together uh, at Raven Stadium, doing a move for love, which is recognizing that Violence prevention is something that we all must do together. I'm going to stop there. I can figure out how to stop sharing. I'm going to stop there and have our two teen ambassadors um, talk a little bit about their experience. Ivan, Ramoni, Ramona. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Ivy Aquilina, and I'm a senior at Baltimore City College, and I live in District 7. And my name is Ramona Pike. I'm also a senior at Baltimore City College, and I live in District 11. Um, today, Ivy and I wanted to talk to you guys about our experiences with One Love and its impact on our school's community. Um, Ramona and I co-head the One Love Club at Baltimore City College, where we both go to school. Uh, we brought this club to City in the midst of the pandemic. Our club has over 40 members, and we meet bi-weekly to discuss One Love's 10 signs, plan fundraisers, and work together to understand the variety of relationships that we're all a part of on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Ramona is going to talk a little bit about the success of one of our workshops that we hosted last year. As we were searching to expand our club to a more diverse group within our school community, we planned an all-inclusive LGBTQ plus relationships workshop. This was alongside One Love staff members who joined us to share One Love's resources. In December of 2020, over 80 students and faculty members from City met to discuss LGBTQ relationships. Students learned about the aspects of One Love's curriculum in terms of all relationships instead of focusing on heteronormative relationships, um, participated in engaging conversations, and were given the space to share personal stories. After the meeting ended, Ivy and I were both overjoyed that students had the space to learn more about their relationships and themselves. I was especially happy when one student on Instagram DM'd me 
saying, I just wanted to thank you for this workshop. I learned a lot about myself and felt like this was a safe space for me to share. I seriously cannot thank you enough for hosting this workshop. It made me feel seen and accepted because my family doesn't accept me. Thank you so, so much. This message clearly touched Ivy and I's hearts and it really showed us the impact that One Love has. Um, additionally, One Love has provided tools to understand relationships in all aspects of our lives. Um, Ramona and I started a One Love Instagram for our school to share resources and provide a safe space for people to reach us. And Ojeda was touching on social media and the presence it has today. I mean, it's it's one of the most like controlling things in some teens' lives. Um, the use of social media today fosters so many unhealthy relationships between users, between people on social media, off of social media. Um, and the tools that One Love provides in understanding relationships applies and guides many of the club's conversations um given like the popularity of social media um as a club our goal is to use these resources to be used outside of meetings um and then an additional example outside of social media um i was in the library and when love was becoming a common language as ojeda was saying as there was there was a couple sitting at a table and they were having a conflict and i watched them pull out a one love 10 signs card that we had handed out that that lived in his wallet and it came out and went onto the table. And that was that was the center of the library that day. And I feel like that was just outside of our club, just being able to see how those resources kind of take on day-to-day -day life for, for students at Baltimore City College. Um, additionally, our school has also begun to implement One Love's curriculum uh, school-wide. Um, last Wednesday, each advisory learned about One Love's relationships, or sorry, One Love's unhealthy and healthy signs. Um, and after that advisory meeting was over, Ivy and I heard various students conversing in the hallways about how powerful the presentations were. Um, so given the growth of One Love at our school, it's really uh, crucial to Ivy and I that we carry on um, the One Love Club. Um, and so it remains at Baltimore City College now and beyond. Um, so Ivy and I very strongly believe in the implementation of One Love's curriculum into all Baltimore City Public Schools, and we really urge you guys to consider it. Um, we want to thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming out um, to, to uh, Madam Executive Director Deja Hall. Thank you for your leadership, your continued leadership of always pouring into Baltimore City. I've worked with you for quite some time, as well as to yourself, Mr. Scroggins. Uh, and to the amazing young Baltimore City uh, residents who unfortunately decided to go to the other school, we thank you for coming out and joining us tonight as well. Um, please uh, keep the uh, council involved in all your uh, upcoming events. If there's anything we can do to support you uh, to help expand um, the One Love Initiative in Baltimore City Public Schools, we certainly uh, will be there. And then last but not least, thank you to, council, to Chairwoman McCray uh, for the invitation uh, and taking care of our showcase tonight. Thank you guys. Thank uh, now you. we're going to thank you. Well, now we're going to get back to our regular uh, scheduled program. At this point, I will call on um, Chairman Costello. No, we're not. Um, are we going to second reader? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to call on Chairman Chairman uh, Costello uh, for short titles. Thank you, Mr. President. I move we read short titles for second and third reader for the duration of the meeting. Without objection, we're going to be in short titles for the duration of the meeting. Hearing and seeing no objections or unreadiness, we are in short titles. Madam Clerk, if you could please read in Council Bill 21 162. Council Bill 21 162, Urban Renewal, Brooklyn Curtis Bay Amendment. Uh, at this point, I'd like to recognize uh, Vice President of the Baltimore City Council, Chairwoman. Uh, Sharon Green Milton. Thank you, Mr. President. And I guess before I begin, I'd like to um, thank my uh, one of my committee members that chaired the last meeting, uh, Councilman uh, John Bullock. Thank you so much for coming to my rescue um, for the emergency that I had. I appreciate you chairing the meeting. Uh, moving on to um, bill number 21 0162. Uh, this bill was heard on February 1st, 2022. Um, amendments were sent to council members. The committee approved a technical amendment and also amended the bill to further extend the date of expiration of the urban renewal plan 
up to December 5th, 2023. I move the amendment. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor of adopting the committee amendments, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Madam Vice President, the floor is yours. I move the bill favorable with amendments. It's a motion for it. It's been second. moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Not, not all at once. All opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill is approved for third reading. Madam Clerk, if you could please read in Council Bill 21-165. Council Bill 21-0165, South Baltimore Gateway Community Impact District and Management Authority. Madam Vice President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, bill number 21-0165 was heard, also heard on February 1st, 2022. I move the bill favorable. Is there a second? Second. second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill is approved for third reading. Madam Clerk, 21-83R. Council Bill 21-0083R, Investigative Hearing, Baltimore City Sheriff's Office, Eviction Procedures. Madam Vice President, I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, bill number 21-0083R was, uh, was heard on January 25th. 2022, I move the bill favorable. Is there a second? Second. The, the, the motion on the floor and it's been properly seconded. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The bill, is, the resolution is adopted. On to rules and oversight. We're going to turn to Council Bill 21 101, Madam Clerk. Council Bill 21-0101, Corrective Bill 2021, General. At this point, I'd like to yield the floor to uh, Chairman Slifer. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The committee held a lengthy hearing on January 27th, 2022 to consider two corrective bills and 12 executive appointments. There are technical amendments uh, to this bill in your inboxes, and so I'd like to move the amendments favorable. Is there a second to the technical okay. amendments in your inbox? Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Turn the floor back over to you, Chairman Schleifer. I'd like to move the bill favorable as amended. Second. Motion on the floor. It's been properly seconded. All those in favor of adopting this bill um, as amended, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill is approved for third reading. Madam Clerk, on to 21-124. Council Bill 21-0124, Corrective Bill 2021, Definitions, Rules of Interpretation, Time Computations. I'd like to yield the floor to the chair of this committee, Chairman Slifer, the floor is yours. Hey, this is the second bill that the committee heard and there are no amendments, and so I'd like to move this bill favorable. It's been moved. Second. And properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill is approved for third reading. Madam Clerk, EA 21 75. 21 0075, Daniel M. Billing, member, member, auctioneer, advisory board. Chair, committee, I yield the floor to you. I move the nomination favorable. Is there a second? Yes. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. 21-0076, Jamar Brown, Member of Retirement Savings Plan Board of Trustees. Mr. Chair, you have the floor. I move the nomination favorable. Yes, sir. It's been moved and probably seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. 21-0077, Paul Cooper, Member, Member, Auctioneer, Advisory Board. You have the floor to uh, the chair. I move the nomination favorable. Second. Second. It's been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 As opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. 21-0078, Kevin Daniels, member Affordable Housing Trust Fund Commission. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. 
I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. EA 21-0079, Bernadine Kimball, member Affordable Housing Trust Fund Commission. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. EA 21-0080, Robert Sinemay, member of Parking Authority of Baltimore City Board of Directors. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. A21-0081, Dr. Ronaldo Evangelista, member Community Relations Commission. Ms. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. A21-0082, Mildred Mimi Forbes Beal, member Fire and Police Employee Retirement System. Mr. Clerk, Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Uh, the nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. EA 21 0083, Dr. Yvette Nietzsche, Member Community Relations Commission. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. 21 0084, Brianna Jones, Member Affordable Housing Trust Fund Commission. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This nomination is approved. Madam Clerk. A21-0085, Alexander Katzenberg, member Board of Fire Commissioners. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. You guys have the nominations approved. Madam Clerk. A21-0086, Leland Shelton, member Board of Municipal Zoning Appeals. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. I move the nomination favorable. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and probably second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. Nomination is approved. Now we're going to turn it over to Ways and Means. Uh, we're going to read in Council Bill 21 183, Madam Clerk. Council Bill 21 183, Sale of Property, WSS South Hanover Street. At this point, I'd like to yield the floor over to Chair of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Costello. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. There are amendments in my colleagues inbox. I move the amendments. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and properly second for the amendments from the committee. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And all those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. I move the bill favorably as amended. Is there a second? Second. Second. This bill has been uh, properly moved and seconded uh, with the committee amendments added. Um, at this point, um, please say aye if you're in favor of the bill. Nay if you're not. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. This bill is approved for third reading. Madam Clerk, 21 187. Council Bill 21 0187. Supplementary general fund capital appropriation, Department of Transportation, $18 million. Chair Costello, I yield the floor to you. Thank you, Mr. President. There are amendments in my colleagues' inbox. I move the amendments. Is there a second? Second. Uh, the committee amendments have been moved and properly seconded. All those in favor of adopting the committee amendments, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. The ayes have it. The amendments are adopted. Mr. Chair, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President, I move the bill favorably as amended. Is there a second? Second. Bill has been moved and properly second. All those in favor of approving this bill, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. 
The ayes have it. This bill is approved as amended and will be ready for third reading. That concludes our second reader agenda for tonight. And luckily, we do not have any third readings for tonight. So we're going to go right into the fun part of the night, which is committee announcements. In no particular order, uh, we're going to start off with Madam Vice President uh, and Chair of Economic Community Development, uh, Ms. Sharon Green Milton. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The Economic and Community Development Committee will hold the uh, following public hearing virtually on WebEx. Uh, on uh, this bill will be heard on March 15th, 2022, at 2 p.m., and that's bill number 21 0102. And it's uh, the work session on uh, building permits, disposal plan requirement, the John F. Chalmers Senior Act sponsor Councilman Torrance. And that's the only one I have. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Vice President. Next, we're going to turn to education, workforce, and youth. Chairman Stokes, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. The Education, Workforce, and Youth Committee will hold a legislative oversight hearing on Thursday, March 10th, 2022, beginning at 5 p.m. for the Baltimore City Children and Youth Fund. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up, we're going to Health, Ed, Environment, and Technology. Uh, Chair McCray, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. No announcements. Thank you, Chairwoman McCray. Next up, we're going to Public Safety and Government Operations. Uh, Chairman uh, Conway, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the Public Safety and Government Operations Committee will be meeting to hear Bill 21-0094, Public Safety Apprenticeship Program, Program Establishment, on uh, Wednesday, February 9th, 2022, at 5 p.m. virtually, uh, at the request of Council Member Chris Burnett. Um, the committee will also be hearing Bill uh, LO 21-0012, Baltimore City Fire Department, EMT Firefighter, Pre-Employment Screening and Hiring Process on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, at 1 p.m. virtually. Um, the committee will be hearing uh, Bill 21-005R, um, informational hearing holding gun offenders accountable on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022 at 101 p.m. virtually uh, at the request of Council Member Stokes. And the committee will be hearing LO 22-0025, uh, Baltimore Police Department five-year crime reduction strategy on Wednesday, February 16th, 2022 at 1.02 p.m. virtually. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Next up, we're going to go to rules and legislative oversight. Uh, Chairman Slifer, the floor is yours. Uh, no announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And then last but certainly not least, ways and means. Chairman Costello, please end us out. Thank you, Mr. President. I am elated to announce that the Ways and Means Committee does not have any announcements this evening. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, at this point, there are several announcements uh, that I have to make uh, for committee as a whole. Uh, the committee as a whole will meet virtually on Monday, February the 14th, 2022 at 5 p.m. for a work session on Bill 21-172, Urban Homesteading Program. The work session will be broadcast on Charm TV. Uh, next up, the committee of the whole will also meet virtually on that same Monday, February the 14th, 2022 at 5.01 p.m. for a work session on Bill 21-173, Baltimore City Home Repairs Grant Program. This work session will also be broadcast live on Charm TV. Uh, next up, the Committee of the Whole will meet virtually again on that same Monday, February 14, 2022, at 5.02 uh, for a work session on Bill 21-174, Baltimore City Senior Home Owners Grant Program. Again, this work session will be broadcast live on Charm City TV. Uh, next up, we're going to have a committee of a whole meet virtually on Wednesday, February the 16th, 2022, at 5 p.m. for a work session on Bill 21-172, Urban Homesteading Program. The work session will broadcast again live on Charm City TV. Uh, we have a committee of a whole on the same day, Wednesday, February 16th, 2022, 
at 5.01 p.m. for a work session on Bill 21-173, Baltimore City Home Repairs Grant Program. This work session will broadcast live on Charm TV. And then last but certainly not least, the community of a whole will meet virtually again on that Wednesday, February 16th, 2022 at 5.02 for a work session on 21-174, Baltimore City Senior Homeowners Grant Program. This work session again will be broadcast live on Charm City TV. Uh, for the general public who are listening in and are hearing the same date repeated uh, for these bills. This is a package of bills. It was three bills that came out as a package. Um, we basically are going to hold the hearing all together. Um, they have to be subsequent to one another. So we have to give them separate times, but they're going to flow into one another. So maybe if we take 10 minutes for the first or an hour for the first, the next one comes after there's no way to explicitly spell out when that time will occur. So we just stagger different times on the same exact date uh, to ensure that we're adhering to um, the proper announcement. So again, th that package will be heard uh, on Monday, February 14th, 2022 at 5, p starting at 5 p.m. as well as February the 16th, uh, 2022, starting at 5 p.m. Now we're going to move to regular announcements. Uh, members, please wait to be recognized if you have a regular announcement. The first hand I saw raised, and I'm so disappointed in Councilwoman Odette Ramos because normally she's the first, but I saw the hand of Councilman Zeke Cohen. So the floor is yours, Councilman. I will defer to my colleague from the 14th, <laughs> man, but guess not. All right. She's um, always quick on the draw. Wow. Oh. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, beginning February 28th, we will be holding our third annual Healing City Summit. This is an entire week of panels, poetry, talks, and other opportunities to hear about how Baltimoreans are healing from trauma. We'll hear from amazing organizations like Roberta's House, the Youth Healing Alliance, Wide Angle Youth Media, the Holistic Life Foundation, Do More, Benia, Center Stage, and many more. We'll also hear from Bessel van Vanderkolk, who's the author of the New York Times bestselling book, The Body Keeps the Score. Hope, hope folks can join us to register. Just go to the Healing City Baltimore website. That's healingcitybaltimore.com and sign up. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Member. Are there any other additional regular announcements? Uh oh, there goes the trusted hand. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Odette Ramos, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. President and colleagues. Um, I know I had the floor a lot today, but I just wanted to really give a shout out. We need to bring more attention to this. Um, the Space Telescope Science Institute, which is located in my district, is the entity that designed and is getting the data from the web, the James Webb Space Telescope. This is super exciting. And I'm so proud to have uh, the Institute in my district and many of the scientists and the astrophysicists and everybody else working in that uh, in this project are my constituents. So I just wanna give a shout out to them. This is really great. As Dan Roderick said, Baltimore may not be the center of the universe, but we can see it from here. Thank you. No, thank you. Are there any additional committee? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, regular announcements? Do not see the hand or hear anyone at this point. I'd like to recognize council vice president for adjournment. Thank you, Mr. President. The next meeting of the city council will be held on Tuesday, February 22nd, 2022 at 5 PM. Remember that's Tuesday, February 22nd, because that Monday, February 21st is uh, president's day. Um, and also, may we have a moment of silence for the now uh, families of 35 victims of homicide uh, to date. And, um, of course, our continued opioid epidemic and our increase of suicides among all ages and all uh, races and ethnicity. So um, uh, we definitely need a strong moment of silence. Thank you, uh, Madam Vice President. Uh, all members could bow their head for a brief moment of silence.
Thank you for that. There being no new business before the desk, this will conclude the 27th meeting of the 73rd term of your Baltimore City Council. Baltimore City, we absolutely love you. Good night. Good night.